Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas McGinn, the Executive Vice President for the Physician Enterprise, and welcome to the first episode of the Five Minute Check In. The goal here is to give you some updates on some organizational changes, to look at some of the latest research in healthcare and how that might impact how we deliver care in all our communities. I'm very passionate about evidence based medicine and research, and I hope to bring to my clinical partners some news on what's happening in the science literature and how we might adopt that science and improve the health and care of all of our communities. Most importantly, we're going to try to keep this short and somewhat entertaining. There's a lot to get to, so let's get right to it. Today is Monday, October 18th, and things change quickly, so let's discuss what's happening with the Delta variant. It's down 40% over the last several weeks, both in mortality, hospitalizations, and also infections are down. So that's the great news. Hopefully we will slowly see the pressure come off all of us as we work so hard in the front lines in our hospitals and our clinics. The second big news from last week was when the advisory committee to the FDA met and they gave approval for a booster shot for Moderna and for J&J. The Moderna shot was half the dose of the original shot. We're waiting for formal approval of that, but it's pretty confident that'll be coming through with the same recommendations that folks over 65 and those under 65 with certain medical conditions and frontline workers. So this is all good news for us. The other thing that we're waiting to hear from is what they call the NIH mixing studies. So in the mixing studies, if you got Moderna and then you get a booster with Pfizer, they would check to see how that went and so on and so on. So they mix and match the different things. What I've been hearing and what we've been reading in preliminary studies is that with the J&J vaccine, you get a seven times bump in the antibodies. And with the Pfizer, you get approximately a 30 times bump in your antibodies, but Moderna gives you a 70 times bump in your antibodies. Speaking of antibodies, there was another article that came out in Science, very interesting study, looking at the, the impact of the vaccine and showing that antibodies are important to measure, but more importantly is to look at T cells and T cell memory. And this study demonstrated that the vaccines really have a major impact on the memory cells, which really are the most important thing in our vaccination process. We're also waiting to hear about the vaccine approval for children between the ages of five and 12. This is a major step forward in controlling this pandemic. And I know a lot of parents are hesitant, but I think when we're talking to parents about this, we need to remind them that during this pandemic, we've seen over 300,000 children admitted to our hospitals and lost over 500 children. Also, we need to keep in mind that in adults, the long haul syndrome occurs in up to 25 to 30% of people, and we may see the same numbers in children. The other big news was Merck is applying for approval for the first oral antiretroviral pill that can be taken by people who are infected by COVID and it reduces hospitalization and death dramatically. I feel pretty confident that this is going to get approved. And again, this is to be used not instead of a vaccine, but in addition as a backup for those who have been vaccinated and get a breakthrough infection. So this is a big step forward in our fight against COVID. Now let's look at the healthcare news in general and beyond COVID. There's been some interesting publications recently that was reviewed actually in the New York Times about this debate between fitness and thinness. The fundamental point of this article was that a lot of us focus on losing weight and not really on fitness. It's been pretty well studied that exercise is a very difficult way. Exercise alone is a very very difficult way for us to lose weight. So many of us go on diets and lose weight and back up and down and losing weight, but we don't really focus on fitness. What these new studies have shown is that people who are obese, who do not lose weight, but exercise have tremendous benefits in reducing hypertension, diabetes, and other cardiovascular mortality and morbidity issues. So in many ways, being fit but overweight may actually be superior to being thin and out of shape. Just something to think about when you're talking to your patients. Ideally, at the end of the day, it would be nice if folks were dieting, losing weight, and being fit. That would be the ideal scenario. But 
If you're a little overweight and you're fit, that's also beneficial. So before I close out the first five minute check-in, I just wanna highlight some good news that has occurred across Common Spirit Health and the physician enterprise. The AMA recognized Dignity Health Mercy Medical Group as one in 44 healthcare organizations to receive the 2021 Joy in Medicine Health System Recognition Program. That's an amazing accomplishment. It means we're caring for those we work with and preventing burnout. So congratulations. Also, the Surgical Review Corporation recognized the orthopedic surgeons, Dr. Lance Baer, Dr. Aaron Moyer, Dr. Matthew Beck, Dr. Bradley Waters from Franciscan Medical Group for demonstrating top excellence in joint replacement. Dr. Steve Ackerman and the CHI Health Nebraska team performed their 500th Watchman procedure. Amazing landmark for them. Congratulations. In Texas, men's infection risk plunges under prostate biopsy methods. The Baylor St. Luke's urologist, Dr. Christopher Kosiak and Dr. Salem Cherian recently performed their first prostate biopsy using an innovative precision point transperineal access system. This is an amazing new system that reduces infections during biopsies. So congratulations to everybody that's being recognized and all the accomplishments across Common Spirit. We should all be aware of these accomplishments and be proud that we're all part of a cutting edge system that cares for every community. So thank you. So congratulations to everyone who received an award or reached the milestone. I think when you step back from all of this, it's really quite impressive all the amazing things that are going on here at Common Spirit. And we need to all take pride in that and recognize that. So if you have something you'd like me to cover, an award you received, a milestone that you reached, or something interesting that you think we should talk about, please email us. And thank you so much for joining me in the first five-minute check-in. I'll see you in two weeks.